Hello everybody, my name is Miriam Thiel Alberts. I'm an animal communicator, healer, Reiki master and writer and filmmaker. And I'm here today to share my story from the book, Magic and Miracles. And my story is called Talking to Golden Arrow. I stood in front of the hall stall and looked at the regal white horse. He was peacefully chewing the fresh hay which scented the air in the old barn. I held out my hand for him to sniff and he blew his warm breath into it. His silky fur seemed to light the whole stable and his expression was curious. I heard the low chewing sounds of the other horses and I was slowly getting cold. It was January in Denmark and the winter had been long, gray and miserable. I leaned close and whispered, tomorrow you're mine golden arrow. The horse looked at me and nodded his head. The previous owner had called him Indy, but his paper said Golden Arrow, so I was giving him a forever home and his beautiful name back. The owner didn't want to keep him as she couldn't train him, so she gave Golden Arrow to me for free. On my drive through the black night back to the film school where I lived and worked, I thought about how this all had happened. A year ago, I had taken a job as head of film production at a college specialized in filmmaking and moved from Germany to rural Denmark. The job and the move proved disappointing. The work atmosphere was hostile and frightening. Every time the principal yelled at me, I felt like I was seven years old again, standing between my fighting parents, hoping this time they wouldn't kill each other while ducking from the things they threw at each other. We lived in a big house in an affluent neighborhood and I desperately tried to hide the drama that occurred behind the closed doors of the pristine, pristine facade. The day after a particularly loud and upsetting fight the night before, I went to my mother and cheered her to cheer her up. I was happy. I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be a princess live in a castle with a handsome prince and wear long pretty dresses. When I told my mother, she sucked in the air noisily through, through her pursed lips and vehemently shook her head. You will never be a princess, as you were not born a princess. Her curt and angry answer shook me and I felt ashamed for wanting such a foolish thing. The wish to become a princess went into a locked box in my heart and I never spoke of it again. I grew up bitter and afraid of people, learning my secret of wanting to feel like a princess. Mostly I had relationships with men who were not princes and certainly did not believe me to be their princess. And I felt I deserved this treatment. I had never felt really loved by my mother and because of it, I believed that if my mother couldn't love me, then I must not be worthy of love. Most of my life I hated myself for my secret wish to be a princess. And now I was getting the white horse instead of the prince, I thought, smiling. I went back to my spacious empty apartment and that night I dreamt about being a little girl again, cantering on a white pony through the forest. I laughed as the trees flew past and I inhaled the arom aromatic cool air. The sun warmed my skin and I felt so happy that I wanted this feeling to go on forever. Going to the horse, sta horse stables and riding in the forest were my, were my only joys when I was little. Those rare moments helped me survive the loveless environment I grew up in. When I was not with the ponies, I protected my heart with thick, tall walls, afraid of getting hurt again. But even though they kept the pain away, they also kept the love out. Now the little girl inside me had finally, finally rebelled against my uncomfortable, com uncomfortable work situation and pushed me after more than 30 years to take up horseback riding again and to adopt a wild horse. I was not an experienced rider and Golden Arrow was definitely not a beginner's horse. He was also not really interested in being trained as his previous training attempts, attempts had made him feel very unsafe. Instead, he had learned how to avoid uncomfortable situations by rearing, running away, or simply bucking, which reminded me of my rebellion during my teenage years. 
But when the woman called and told me she wanted to give Golden Arrow to me for free, something inside me just said, yes. It was a yes to my inner child's dream to have my own horse, which I had locked away for a long time alongside my wish to be a princess. I moved Golden Arrow to a stable close to me and visited him daily. He gave me an excuse to sneak away from the oppressive atm atmosphere at the college and his presence and big spirit calmed me. When it came to training, he would allow it as long as I didn't ask him to do anything challenging. If I challenged him, he would fight against it. A few weeks later, I entered the principal's office for my end of year appraisal meeting and I knew immediately that something was wrong. I felt the hostile energy in the room and I wanted to run away. Although I was not expecting it at all, when the principal said, we are not prolonging your contract, I just nodded silently. After that, the rest of the meeting was a blur and I left not really knowing what happened. I did, however, have the notion that my contract was not prolonged because I challenged, challenged the principal for proper elections for a workers' representative and hope for a kinder and healthier work environment. I went to Golden Arrow in the days and I cried hot tears in his long white mane. He stood still and breathed warm air into my neck. Somehow I knew things were going to be okay, even though at that time I didn't know how. I needed to find a place for me and Golden Arrow and a job to support us quickly. But this time I decided not to worry about my dire situation and I applied for a training in animal communication and healing. I felt this would, be, this would help the bond between Golden Arrow and me and I had always intuitively connected with animals and knew how they felt. I started my education close to Copenhagen a month after leaving my job. I concentrated on meditating daily and looking after myself. A couple of weeks before I had to leave the apartment at the college, out of the blue, I was offered a job at a horse livery stable. The job included a cozy ap apartment and I could bring my horse and cat. I really loved my apartment above the riding hall overlooking the horses' fields. I looked after 17 horses and had a lot of spare time to be with Golden Arrow. In the early morning when I went into the stable to feed the horses, Golden Arrow would always greet me with a whinny. He would look at me with his smiling eyes and he happily followed me to the paddock to play with his new friends. In this peaceful, beautiful setting, I started to breathe again and the tension from the recent stress of my, uh, stress of my previous job slowly left my body. Golden Arrow and I started training in the riding hall and he was now, tra now trying to follow my leads. There were still times when he got stressed and, I would just, and he would just shut down or buck, but I would just go back and try it again. To help Golden Arrow in the training process, I became a Reiki practitioner and gave him therapeutic healing on a regular basis, which he loved. I saw not only a big change in him, but also in me. I started, started experiencing profound happiness. I always had the dream of cantering with my horse through the forest. And I started riding with Golden Arrow in the forest, which was frightening for both of us at first. Golden Arrow was mostly attentive and happy, even though he would often get startled and afraid of things in the forest. Slowly, I was starting to trust my feelings and my connection to Golden Arrow. When I felt he was getting overwhelmed, I dismount and walk with him for a while. Trusting my feelings became a necessity to keep us both safe, as Golden Arrow could in an instant rear, buck and jump if he became too stressed. When we managed to trip through the forest, we proudly came back to the farm, feeling like championship winners. After completing my animal communication training, I wanted to talk to Golden Arrow. He was grazing in his paddock and when he saw me, he came over and looked at me curiously. The look in his eyes had changed so much over the past few months. His soft, trusting gaze warmed my heart and I was curious what he would want to share with me. After a few moments, I saw him blinking his eye and in my mind, I heard 
his message loud and clear. He told me, I want to be in a film. When I laughed, he nodded his head a few times as if to tell me that I was right. Then he turned around and trotted back to his hay. I stood there trying to understand what had just happened. I had tried, trained as a scriptwriter at university 12 years prior, and since working at the horse farm, I had only worked as a writer and editor sporadically. I liked the idea of writing another film with Golden Arrow as the star. I got to work immediately and prepared to film a short documentary about animal communication and healing during horse training. A friend of mine, a cameraman from Germany, agreed to do the filming. The first morning, as we put up the camera to catch the horses grazing calmly on the big summer field, we were surprised to see that Golden Arrow was actually afraid of the camera. He would run away from it whenever we tried to film him. That's when it dawned on me that Arrow had not wanted to be in this film for himself. Later, we decided to set up, set up the camera in front of his stall for an interview with me so that Golden Arrow and I were in the same shot. When the cameraman turned on the equipment and nodded in my direction, I took a deep breath and started telling our story. The words flooded not from me, but through me. I spoke for the very first time about me feeling abandoned and lonely as a child. As I spoke, it became clear to me that I had projected these feelings onto Golden Arrow, as he had also been abandoned emotionally. At the end of my speech, tears rolled down my face. I had not expected to get confronted by these old feelings. As I cried, Golden Arrow caressed my face and I was filled with deep, deep gratitude. I had spoken my truth. The silent little girl who had pretended that everything was fine had finally spoken up. I dried my face and we knew that this was going to be the heart of our short documentary. I realized I was feeling I was finally feeling okay the way I was and did not want to hide anything anymore. When I am with Arrow, I feel a deep bond between us and it is like we were meant for each other. After we finished the film, I sat down and I loudly exhaled. The rigid walls around my heart were slowly dissolving and I was starting to feel myself again. When my film Talking to Golden Arrow was accepted into the prestigious film festival Equus in New York, I was filled with such joy and gratitude. In the hectic weeks before the festival, I took Golden Arrow in from the field and he started bumping his head against my shoulder. I was annoyed at first, but then suddenly thought of an old friend. We went to the same school and met again several years later on Christmas Eve in our hometown. Our renewed friendship had unfortunately lasted only a few months as I was off to film school and he moved from Germany to Los Angeles. Before he left, he told me he had fallen in love with me. But I was unable to open my heart and made up an excuse about it not being the right time for me. I saw the sadness in his eyes and he never contacted me again. When I found out on social media that he had gotten married, my heart ached and I was sure we would never see each other again. I truly felt I had missed a big chance in my life. Years later, I saw that he had taken down all the pictures from his wedding and a little glimpse of hope resurfaced. A few days later, as I cantered with Arrow through the beautiful forest, he suddenly stopped and looked at me. I asked him what he wanted to tell me and I heard, invite him. I knew immediately, immediately who he meant and I was surprised, but I knew Golden Arrow was right. Back at the barn, I sent my friend in Los Angeles a message to see if he wanted to join me in New York for the premiere of my film. To my surprise, he responded, yes. We agreed to meet at the cinema after not having seen each other for 12 years. But when I saw him leaning against the wall, my heart made a little jump. During the screening of the film, he was very touched of my, by my film and I could see a little tear in his eye. Over the week of the premiere, we became close friends again. I felt safe with him and we would talk and laugh for hours. This time felt different to all my other relationships. 
because I was completely honest with him. Six months later, when I visited him in Los Angeles, being together felt completely natural and we had the most wonderful time. On our last night, we sat in bed drinking a glass of champagne and eating strawberries. My heart was heavy with sadness, knowing that I had to leave in the morning. It was late, the fan was humming, and outside we could hear police sirens and helicopters. He sat up and looked into my eyes and said, I want to be together with you forever. Do you want to marry me? I was somehow not shocked. I kissed him and I said, yes. For the first time, I really felt I belonged to somebody. I had come home emotionally. My horse had guided me to heal my heart, accept myself, and finally find true love. Nearly on the day a year after we met in New York, we were married in Denmark in a beautiful little church in the countryside. When I entered the church in my long white dress, the music started and I saw him waiting for me at the altar. I truly felt like a princess. My deepest wish had come true because my horse asked me to be in the film and I finally could find the courage to open my heart for true love. Thank you.